Jenkins has been one of the most popular continuous integration servers used by today's industries in their day-to-day -day DevOps lifecycle. Kubernetes, on the other hand, is growing continuously in the field of the container orchestration. Well, there's no doubt in that, right? So developers needed a way to maximize the benefits by reducing the production time and operation costs. So, well, this is where Jenkins X serves this purpose of the developers by providing an automated CI CD solution for modern cloud applications on Kubernetes. Hi all, this is Sahiti on behalf of Edureka, and I welcome you to the session on Jenkins versus Jenkins X. Since it's an extension of Jenkins, it's very important for all of us to understand how Jenkins X differs from Jenkins and what are the additional features that it provides, right? So without any further ado, let's take a look at the topics for today's session. So the topics for today's session are as you can see on my screen. We'll start this session with what is Jenkins and then we'll discuss what is Jenkins X. After that, we'll look into the need of Jenkins X and finally we'll understand the differences between Jenkins and Jenkins X. So I hope I'm clear with my agenda today. All right, so that's great. Now before we get started, subscribe to the Edureka YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update from us on the top trending technologies. Also, if you're looking for an online training certification in DevOps, then check out the link in the description box below. On that note, let's get started with the first topic for today's session, that is what is Jenkins. Now Jenkins is one of the most popular tools in today's market and is built for the continuous integration purposes. It is written in Java and is used to build and test the software projects and makes it easy for the developers to integrate the required changes for the project. This tool also aims to continuously deliver software by integrating a large number of testing and the deployment softwares. Now by using Jenkins, startup to hypergrowth companies can accelerate the software development process through the automation. And apart from this, it also integrates the development lifecycle processes of different kinds such as the build, documentation, testing, packaging, staging environment, deployment, statistical analysis, and many more. So it provides various plugins to allow integration of various DevOps stages. For example, if I have to explain you, then if you want to use a particular tool, then you just need to install the required plugins for that particular tool by using Jenkins, right? So that's how guys Jenkins works. It's really easy to use. And then once you get a hands on experience in Jenkins, you'll understand what I'm talking about with respect to the plugins and how to integrate various tools, right? So that was about Jenkins. Now let's move forward with the next topic for today's session. That is what is Jenkins X? Now before I tell you what is Jenkins X, let me define it for you. So James Strachan, the chief architect of Jenkins X, defines it as an open source opinionated way to do continuous delivery with Kubernetes natively without worrying too much about the underlying infrastructure. So if I have to explain you in simpler terms, it's basically an extension or a sub project of Jenkins and is supported by popular cloud platforms like Amazon, Azure, Google IBM Cloud, OpenShift and Pivotal, right? So I would just say that you know Jenkins X uses the best practices of DevOps to provide the developers with an increase in speed and also aims to reduce the production time. Apart from this, Jenkins X also makes sure that you know the complexities are reduced as with a single command you can create a Kubernetes cluster. Now trust me guys, creating a Kubernetes cluster is a tedious task. So if you have worked on Kubernetes before, you would definitely understand what I'm saying over here that you know installing and configuring Kubernetes is quite a tedious task. But if you use Jenkins X, then you just have to use a single command and then you can create your Kubernetes cluster. Apart from this, you can also install the tools to manage applications, create and build deployment pipelines, set web hooks, and also deploy applications to various environments with just a single command, right? So isn't that great? With a single command, you can do so much of activities, right? Now, in a fast moving world like today, it's obvious that you know developers cannot sit and waste time to sit and configure something. They just need quick ways to configure something, right? So that's where Jenkins X plays an important role. Over here, I would also like to mention one point that you know when a project is started, Jenkins X makes sure that you know not a lot of time is spent to create the structure and gather the required files. It makes sure that you know the minimum time is required to do these activities, right? So in short, I would say that you know Jenkins X provides all the required configurations of Jenkins, and you do not have to know which plugins are required to build a CI CD pipeline. Right, so that was about Jenkins X guys. I hope that you've understood what is Jenkins X. Now that you know what is Jenkins and what is Jenkins X, let's look into the need of Jenkins X. Now before I list down the reasons for the need of Jenkins X, let me tell you that you know there's obviously no doubt in the fact that the way software is developed has evolved and transformed in the last few years. With DevOps gaining high popularity, companies are using this methodology to deliver the software in quite a quick manner. 
I would say that you know this is because DevOps makes sure that the speed of development is reduced, the downtime is reduced, but at the same time, industry has also seen various other changes. When I say various other changes, I mean the way the software development life cycles are executed, or new technologies coming up, or how an application infrastructure is built, and so on. So one of the major change is microservices. Now microservices is one of the most popular deployment models, which is nowadays being incorporated by today's hypergrowth market. Unlike monolithic applications, microservice applications are smaller, granular, and independent services. So these provide various benefits that have led the companies to use microservices with DevOps, right? So microservices, if you just have to understand, guys, these are just small containers that you can consider in, in which all the packages or all the libraries, or maybe when you build an application, a particular service can be treated as a microservice, and all the required packages and libraries are put into a single container, right? So you can just consider it as a big bucket which has everything related to that particular service functionality or maybe the application itself, right? So nowadays it's quite popular in today's market because you know all the companies starting from startups to multinational companies are trying to build their applications using the microservice architecture. Now if you're wondering what are the advantages of microservices, then you can refer to my session on what is microservices because that session will tell you in depth how you can use microservices, what are the advantages and also how to deploy them. So well, that was about the first point. Now the second point, or I would say the second major change that I've observed, is the container ecosystem. So when I say container ecosystem, what I mean by that is, you know, introduction of containers has evolved in today's market. Container ecosystem goes in hand in hand with microservice architecture, and in today's industry, I see that you know various kinds of containers on the same host can deploy microservices built using different kinds of technologies or frameworks. So this gives the developers the freedom to use whichever technology they want to use and also further orchestrate these containers. So when you build a service, what can happen is that you know maybe you have an application of three services, right? So maybe the developers working on the first service are more comfortable in Python, maybe the team working on the second service is more comfortable on Java, and same goes with the third team which is working on the third microservice. All these three teams can have their freedom of their own technology and frameworks and definitely they can all come together and build a single application. So that was about the second point guys. Now the third major change in today's market that I see is the container orchestration. Now Kubernetes as all of us know is rising in today's market and this is mainly because you know it powers some of the biggest and the most complex deployments in the world. Not only this but also prominent cloud providers such as GCP, AWS, Azure and Oracle Cloud have announced Kubernetes integration into their cloud platforms. It comes with open source installation and simplifies the optimal operations and upgrades the orchestration of the containers. Now when I say orchestration of the containers, I hope that you've understood that you know I mean that you know how you can scale up or scale down the containers based on the load of the application or maybe the requirement of the client and so on, right? Well, with all these changes, it's quite evident that you know developers have the access to a lot of options to fragment and modify their open source systems with various CI CD tools. But over here, I would say that you know enterprise can take a large amount of time to just understand which tools must be used to develop a successful CI CD pipeline while using Kubernetes. Now this is because there is no straightforward way to manage Kubernetes cluster with the right combination of the plugins and the configuration. Now to avoid such kind of scenario of wasting time and maybe installing and configuring Kubernetes cluster, which takes a lot of time of the developers, developer community wanted to figure out a solution to leverage Jenkins to automate CI/CD in the cloud for people struggling with Kubernetes or haven't used it before. Right, so Jenkins X was basically the solution to this problem, and that's how Jenkins X came into the marketplace. So I hope that you've understood the need of Jenkins X. It just emerged to help the developer community to automate the CI/CD pipeline using Kubernetes in a better way, in such a way that you know people who haven't used Kubernetes or maybe who are weak in using Kubernetes, or maybe even that lot of developers who do not want to use Kubernetes, they can just directly automate the CI/CD pipeline in the cloud. So as I mentioned before, guys. Jenkins X is an extension of Jenkins, so anybody who has worked in the DevOps field must have definitely come across Jenkins. And also, if you know what is Jenkins, and I'm sure understanding and using Jenkins X is quite an easy task for you. So now that I've told you what is Jenkins, what is Jenkins X, and the need of it, let's understand the differences between Jenkins and Jenkins X. Now, talking about the differences between Jenkins and Jenkins X, let me tell you that Jenkins takes an unopinated view, whereas Jenkins X takes an opinionated view. And is used to work better with containerization and orchestration tools like Docker or Kubernetes. So, guys, that was about the first difference. Now, talking about the second difference, if you ask me, then let me tell you over here that you know both of them are quite related to each other, right? So, whatever task that you want to do with Jenkins X can also be done with Jenkins. 
but the only problem is that you need to do those tasks you'll require several integrations and plugins to configure whereas jenkins x just simplifies the configuration right so it just makes the task easy for you right so i would say jenkins x is used to simplify the configuration and lets you harness the power of jenkins 2.0 right now that was about the second difference guys not only this but it also lets you open source the tools like helm draft monocular chart museum nexus and docker registry to easily build cloud native applications right so guys that was about the second difference now let's move forward with the third difference over here i would say that you know jenkins x defines the process whereas jenkins adapts to the process which are required or needed right so basically when you're trying to create a process or maybe when you're trying to define a process Jenkins X is used to define that particular process and Jenkins automatically adapts to the processes which are required or needed by the client, right? Now moving on to the last difference, I would say Jenkins X adopts a CLI API first approach and relies on the configuration as code to embrace external tools like monocular helm and so on. On the contrary side, I would say Jenkins uses the first GUI approach with the configuration via UI and depends heavily on the plugins, right? So over here I would say Jenkins X adopts a CLI or an API first approach whereas Jenkins uses the first GUI approach, right? So guys that were the differences between Jenkins and Jenkins X. So I hope that you found it clear. So with that I come to an end to my today's session. I hope you found this session informative and I hope that you've understood how Jenkins differs from Jenkins X. So if you have any further queries related to the session, please comment down in the comment section below. Until then that's all from my side today. I hope you found the session informative. Thank you and have a great day. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning.